Your Toyota BC dealers presents BC Outdoors Sport Fishing. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah. Wow, hot fish. Oh, oh yeah. There we go. <laughs> Come on, Heather. Oh, we got a quad that way. With your host, Mike Mitchell. Oh, he's coming this way, guys. BC Outdoors Sport Fishing is brought to you by Rapala, Yamaha, Freshwater Fisheries Society of BC, Port Boathouse, and the Pacific Salmon Foundation. Welcome everybody to BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. I'm your host, Mike Mitchell. We've got a great show for you today. It's late April with Jason Tonelli from Pacific Angle. Jay? Hey Mike, it's good to have you guys yeah. back out on the boat. Excited. What's going on? Well, we're going to head off to uh, South Bowen and chase some Chinook today. That's okay. about 20 minutes from downtown Vancouver. Yep. Uh, we've got a nice low slack at 10.30, so let's drop the traps and get out of here. Yeah, sounds good. Do this a lot. I'll take yeah. I'll take smaller herring, like the yeah. the, the five-inch herring, yeah. and I'll put it in there. Work in an anchovy teaser head. Yeah, works really good. Huh. It's a totally different roll than uh, with the herring teaser head. Yeah. Get all the lines cleared out of the way, Jay. How's that feel? It's pretty <laughs> good. It's taking some good lines. Nice. We're just dealing with the other side there. Yeah, getting everything all set up. There's that bite. That was on that the, was good. Uh, on the special teaser head. That's on the new yeah, teaser head. Yeah, we called that one. That roll was That's looking good. The new BCO special. Awesome. Let's get this guy out of the way here, and then I'll clear that other one. We got one rod up already on the other side, so we should be good. Do you want this oh, cannonball wow. and everything right up, or you got them under control? I think I got them under control. Okay. Do you want that one? Oh. No. Oh, oh no. Oh. <laughs> Did you see that jump? No, I didn't. Holy smokes. Yeah, it was a little bit bigger than I thought. Was it? Yeah, probably about 20. Came oh. flying, flying out of the water, like full on somersault hooks came out. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm going to back down there. That's a good start. Nice. It's all right, rookie your first time at the show. <laughs> Should have seen that jump. I just got a soft oh, splash. Man. They don't do that often. No. Yeah, I'll let you deal with that side. I'll get this side down. Okay. What's this one on the bait again? No, that one's on the, uh, the glow green coyote. <laughs> Bites on Jay. Yeah, we just lost one. <laughs> just got the gear back down and I just walked away from the rigger and then that one slammed it. Let's get these rods out of your way. Yeah. We're just setting up at a little bit of a tangle on this side after that uh, fire drill we dealt with with that last fish. There you go. First Chinook fight of the season and it's late nice. April. Unbelievable. Vancouver Harbor, basically. <laughs> yeah, we're just off South Bowen, yeah. about uh, 25 minutes from the dock. You can see Bowen there yeah. off the starboard side of the boat. And you're showing us on the chart the size of this hump we're actually fishing. When I think hump, I'm thinking, you know, you, you, you can make one tack yeah, cross, right? Exactly. This is a huge, huge thing we're fishing, A lot right? of people, when they try and find this spot, they're looking for a distinct hump, but it's more of a tabletop. It's about yeah. a, comes up to about 400, 450 feet, and it's miles long. It's a big yeah. spot, sort of like a big jelly bean. On the chart there, you'll see it. Oh, I forgot how much I missed Chinook fishing. <sighs> yeah. How much I miss it. <laughs> it's always fun. I think the last time I fought a Chinook was at the trade show on the simulator. <laughs> Coyote spoons out of Vancouver Harbor in late April. Who'd have, who'd have thought this was actually happening? But there's obviously lots of guys doing this. There's a whole whack of boats out here and it's it's, it's a Wednesday. Yeah, it's about <laughs> a dozen boats. boats. You know, you'll see 40, 50 boats out here on a nice, flat, calm, sunny weekend. But the great thing about this spot, it's a huge. So everybody, you can have a lot yeah, of boats in everybody here. Yeah, everybody spreads out. 
You don't have to be fishing tight to other guys. It's yeah. a big open water fishery. So does this fishery go off during the summer too, the tail end of the season, like when the migrating Chinook are going up the Fraser? Is this a good spot as well then? It's actually more of a, like a spring spot. Is so okay? it yeah. usually kicks off around uh, April 15th. This year was a little earlier. Yeah. Goes to about June 1st. So a lot of these fish, these are mostly U.S. fish. Okay. So That's about 30% local mixed stocks, and about 60 to 70% of them are probably heading down into Columbia. Yeah. You know, a lot of fish in the sort of 12 to 25 pound range. That looks like what we got right here. That's yeah, just been a. I'm just kind of. I'm not horsing them in. I'm not really bathing. I'm just first fish of the year. You got to kind of <laughs> get used to what you're doing, right? Yeah. He took some good line there to start off. Yeah. Nothing like this feeling, I'll tell you. Especially when you can start this. Everybody else is starting well, to gear up and do the trout fishing right now. I can't now. wait till we get four rods down. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you might actually get a double. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the thing. There's a lot going on. It's uh, you know, it's late April. It's the tail end of steelhead season. Yeah. Um, it's been an early spring. Guys are chronomid fishing. Yeah. We got chinook. There's, it's always a. Yeah, there's something going on. It's a on. pretty cool time of year. For, yeah. For just fishing in BC in general. Here's pop, lots of pop. Right look here for here. Let's get a look at this guy. Just a little guy. Yeah, that's all right though. Good start. This guy's on the spoon, so just one hook. So, oh, it's not that little, but. And what's legal legal size to keep up in this up uh, right now? 62 centimeters, so 24 and a half inches. So yeah. that'd be uh, just probably legal fish for sure. But I think we'll get some bigger ones today. So we'll we'll pop that guy. That's fish. a nice fish. Yeah, it is a nice fish. So is it a hatchery mark fish? Can you that's tell? That's a wild one. Is it okay? Yeah. That's good to let that guy go. There he goes. Awesome. All right. Good start. Yeah. Good start. All right. All right. Well, we're let's, here. let's get four. Yeah. Let's get four let's rods. Go for the down. double. Yeah. Get the rods down. Awesome. Drop your anchor. We'll be right back. Closed captioning is fueled by the Sport Fishing Institute of BC. Nice. Looks good. Looks Looks good. Nice. Yeah. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> nice, Jay. Instruct me on Grasshopper. Are you good? I think he's on the clip. Are you on the clip still? <clears throat> Not anymore. You got him? Yeah. All right. What does it feel? Oh, that's a chuck. Look at that rod bend right from the cork out. Oh, nice. You're a. You're a a wily veteran, so I'm just gonna leave the rods down. I might double up here, right? You let me know if you need something cleared, though. Oh, you're gonna, you want to keep all three? Oh, yeah. Well, we're gonna need, well he's gonna gone. He's way out there now. Down, eh? Yeah. You let me know. You let me know if you need me to clear something for you. But I think you can fish right down that that pipe there, right? I'll just do everything, Mike. I'll I'll steer yeah. the boat. I'll oh, adjust the speed. What? I'm you're the I'm the host of the show. I can't do much. I don't want to <laughs> chip a nail here. What do you want me to do? You want any of these rods up? Seriously? You want this one up? That's clear that side. Okay. I lost the last one, so. Yeah, I know. No pressure's on here. That's this. Whoa. Right back where we hooked the other one on the yeah. plotter. Excellent. That's one thing about this fishery. When you do get on a school of fish, you're three miles offshore, you should punch in a couple waypoints on yeah. your Yeah, That's Lorance. a good point, yeah. And then, then try to circle yeah. around those, yeah. right? Yeah, that way you can stay on top of them. We just turned around after we got that last fish. Yeah. We came back into this spot and hooked up. We've been watching you on your uh, on social media and stuff like that, following some of the fishing. You had a pretty wow. decent fish up there too, didn't you? Had something over. Most of the fish are 12 to maybe 20 pounds, but there's been a lot of big fish this year. We got a, a 30 and some That's uh, amazing. Yeah, some customers showed us pictures of fish that were 23, 26. Yeah. This fish is definitely taking some line. Now, some of these red. Oh, some... up. oh, there he is. Oh, I'm not used to really. No, I was gonna Usually. say. Usually you're doing this, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> this took some line. Oh, double, double! Inside rod, you're on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> be there, be there, be there. I think he's gone. Yeah. Oh, you had your chance, Mike. Well, I was putting away the rods for you. If I would have just left it, how's this one look? Jay, do you need a net? Yeah, we can net them, or I can try and just bring them in. What do you want to do? Oh, we'll net them. Okay. You can see how strong these fish are. Like, this isn't a huge Chinook by a lot of standards. A nice, low-teen fish, but 
They're so strong this time of year. That's what makes this fishery a lot of fun. And you can see they're, they're in schools, right? So you yeah. get a lot of double headers. Oh, so yeah. what I'll get you to do though, son, is I'll there get you is. to back up. Like that, Dad? <laughs> That's right, nice <laughs> job. <laughs> Woo! Looks like a nice hatchery fish, oh, eh, Mike? Beautiful. Nice. Perfect size for eating. Yeah, that's a nice one. Let's keep that one since it's a hatchery. Yeah, yeah that's in there. Yeah, nice hatchery Chinook. Well, we're on a school. Yeah. So, uh, had the double shot there. Let's yeah. get the gear back down. Learning with the pros. Brought to you by your Toyota BC dealers. Today we're going to talk about the different size cannonballs that you can use for local downrigger fishing for Chinook salmon. Uh, a lot of people when they start off they're maybe a little bit intimidated by even a 15 pound cannonball and they'll get a 12 pound cannonball or even a 10 pound cannonball. But with today's Scotty high performance downriggers you want to make sure that you use at least a 15 pound cannonball. Uh, this particular one is coated in glow rubber, uh, it protects your boat. If you have a glass boat like this one here they're quiet and they won't chip your gel coat. Uh, but today we are actually using 18 pound cannonballs. The 18 pound cannonball will allow you to fish two rods. So if you notice today we were actually fishing four rods on two downriggers or so we were stacking. Uh, later on in the day we were fishing 140 feet deep. It got windy. We had to troll a little faster to control the boat. There's a lot of current. It's hard to keep two rods on the downrigger at the correct depth with the 15 count, uh, pound cannonball. That's why a lot of guides will go up to an 18 pound cannonball. That's where the new Scotty uh, 2106 or 2116 high performance downrigger uh, really comes into play. These new downriggers are meant to use 15, 18, and even up to 20 pound cannonballs. Keep watching DC Outdoors Sport Fishing for more tips like these. Drop your anchor. We'll be right back. Fish on. Let's get back to BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. Yeah, he's, he's, off. Off. he's off the cliff. Nice. You're quick. I haven't seen somebody that fast since Morrison going on the rod there. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, I just dropped that one down. So we were getting the fish like a little shallower this morning, but now that it's calmer and sunny, I yeah. dropped it down to 137. Do you want this one up again, Jay? Hit that one. You want yeah, this one we'll, up? yeah, we'll clear that side. Okay. What's that on that one? There. This one is on uh, Harry. Nice. And the chartreuse glow teaser head. Nice. Glow flasher too. Yeah. You know, we like to get the the water's kind of got that tannin color this time of year from yeah. the algae blooms. You start dropping down 137, you want to have a glow teaser head and a glow flasher on yeah. there. You got a handy little thing too. You got that little UV, little handheld UV light that you yeah, a little charge, charge up everything your up. teaser heads, charge up your flashers. Yeah, great idea. And that's, and that's the funny thing. I think people don't realize why there's so many options on spoons like I still have a coyote cop car glow and then I have a coyote cop car regular right that's right yeah and the glow so one they call that one the night rider yeah and so what they have is they got the for the different conditions right you're fishing and same with the flashers some flashers are silver some got you know different moon jelly tape or whatever on it but then there's the the glow ones right so there are specific types of fisheries and conditions that you want to use certain things for definitely yeah i like the like the silver tape flashers and the uv flashers maybe a little higher up yeah and once you start getting down below 120 130 you want to have some glow on there yeah that you know like a green or chartreuse blade flasher silver tape one side and glow on the other that's that's kind of a go-to for the vancouver area yeah I think that's what we got on this side, actually. Pretty normal, you know, it's 10, 30, 11 o'clock, sun's getting a little higher. Another scrappy fish. There's nice looking fish. Yeah, oh, beautiful. Little, that's a great looking fish. A little bit fish. bigger than yeah, the last nice. one. So what do you want to do with this one, Jay? Well, we can let that one go if you want. Sure. Gorgeous. Look at the colors on that fish. Yeah, oh, these, the these are feeding fish. So yeah, these are, look at the purple. You can have a lot of purple and blue on their back. They're aggressively feeding fish. They're a ways from spawning. You get that treble. Yeah, let's stick. I might be able to pop them off here. I got the pliers here. If you want to just grab sure. that, I'll see if we can get lucky. There he goes. Nice job. Nice. Perfect. You didn't have to touch him really, eh? Yeah, 
go, we're on again. Am I out of the clip? Is he running? He's running now. There we go. Bites on, eh, Mike? Yeah. I just dropped that one down. We just hooked up deep here. I threw that rigger back, nice. back down. So the fish are definitely going a little deeper. This might hook up there on, the, on that one. Watching that rod tip. He's going to let me know when I can start reeling. Go. Are you going to get this other leader ready while you got that fish on? Right on. Just had that other fish there, so. I'm just focusing on the rod tip here, watching the rod tip. Wow. This one could be a little bit bigger than the first one I got. Yeah, they're fighting pretty good today, aren't they? Yeah, they are. A couple times I thought they were bigger. And that's what we're talking about. Where we are is what are they feeding on here? They're, there's. You're saying the post spawn herring and then the other yeah, herring are all around, herring, right? Yeah, there's herring. So we're, you know, right off the hump off South Bowen here, three miles offshore, yeah. there's there's bait balls. You got some upwelling. Goes from about 700 feet off of Bowen, 1,000 on the straight side. There's that flasher up there. There it is. Oh, oh a little, little guy. Jump. Not a big yeah. guy. Not a big guy. So there's some upwelling currents there. You have a lot of bait in this area, right? Oh, yeah. So I think this guy's hooked in the yeah, arm. You got him hooked in the arm. That's why he's... I think he's got a little got bit of... You got him hooked right here. Yeah. He's coming in sideways. I think he's got a little bit yeah. of... Yeah. <laughs> I just noticed here. that. Coming in like a cup plug. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll just get this guy off. Yeah, the crank him in. We'll pop him off with the gaff. Nice. Thanks, Jay. Drop your anchor. We'll be right back. Oh, we just missed it over here. Yeah. Bang, there you are on the fish. There's an early fishery over there at Thrasher Rock, which is over towards the Vancouver Island in Nymore area, yeah, and it's about, saying an hour, hour run over there, 50 minutes, and then we're basically right in the middle of the sound here, <laughs> again, which yeah, is kind of neat, right? About 30 minutes from the dock, yeah. you know. What do you want me to do here, Jay? Do you want me to clear in these rods? No, or? he's on the bottom rod, so okay. let's, uh, we might get a, almost get a double here. I mean, yeah. we just almost had a double yeah, there. Yeah, we just missed one over on this side. And just, then... These fish are definitely in big schools. Yeah. And then, uh, sure enough. What are we getting the fish at here? Like, what's the depth of this one? Well, we're 127 with a 30-foot spread, so that's 97. And that fish came at about 107 on that side. We've yeah. been hooking them 130 to... 80 right now basically. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I mean that's the seventh fish we've hooked in yeah. two, three hours. So good day out here on the hump today. Yeah. There he is. I can't I don't think it's a big one. No. Yeah, the wind just changed direction too, so this is this should be a little bit a little bit easier troll. And not a bad looking fish. Oh, oh yeah, good job. Beautiful. Woo. Yes. Now you don't get that a lot with a Chinook, do you? <laughs> no, that's no. the second one that's jumped today. So Yeah, and that one didn't spin the hook back side back uh, here, though. That's not normal, that's for sure. What do we got this one on here? This one, what's it got? Gold that's our BCO, yeah. oh, there's the BCO yeah. teaser head. We've got a few on that now, and then Excellent. there's uh, the glow green Jensen flasher. Let's see where he's hooked. Looks like he's just got Right the in the tip, right in the yeah. nose. Is that a hatchery? No, oh, it's wild fish. Okay. So we want uh, pliers right here beside you. When you're, look at the head shakes, I love it. Yeah, you got a lot of energy too. Here, pass me that and I'll step back on it. I think he's ready. All right, oh, got him. Nice looking fish. Oh, he's got that treble in there pretty good, but if I get lucky. Oh, look at that, there how fast goes. was that? <laughs> Perfect. Nice fish, buddy. Yeah, another glow, glow flasher. Yeah, I like that teaser Good job, buddy. Give that to me. No, no, I want this. <laughs> oh, you want that? Yeah, I'm gonna cut it off and just <laughs> yeah, put, it in, your put it in my pocket. Look at the teeth mark in that. That's They've been awesome. liking that one today. Yeah. Tackle and gear. Here is what we've been using on the water today. 
All right, folks, it's time to talk to you about the tackle we've been using on today's episode. Uh, rods today, again, 10 foot six, classic moochers, uh, medium light action. Again, I, use, I like using these just for the sensitivity of the bite, and you do get a smaller fish. Still feels like a good sized fish for sure. Uh, the reels today were NC1s and also the new classic uh, mooching reels. Um, the line today was a 25 pound Suffix Elite. We use this in high vis and also just the regular uh, kind of smoke green, smoke blue color. Um, Jay, and then we went through the tackle box here. And yeah, you so these are some of those Lure Jensen flashers that uh, you pulled out of your bag this morning. Yep. So the green blade and the chartreuse blade, uh, silver tape on one side, glow tape on the other, really critical for the darker water with a bit, little bit of an algae mm -hmm. bloom this time of year. Uh, and the same sort of glow going into the spoon, so a glow green coyote and then the new BCO uh, Reese Davis teaser head glow with the red chin and then the black on top. Yeah. And of course the Gamagatsu hooks and the big river bait hook for the trailer was also good. And of course everything went down. We make sure we're using the Suffolk 30 pound fluorocarbon leader yeah. again, bite resistant, invisible, and uh, no problems right there. Yeah, good nachos. abrasion resistance and perfect size for Chinook fishing. Great. All right, folks, we're gonna follow up with a quick list for you. Stay tuned for that. All tackle and gear is available at Harbor Chandler. Wow, what a great day. So we're just over at the spot where we were this morning where we dropped the crab traps. We're gonna pick them up and see what we got. Okay, Mike, we're coming up to the first trap just off the starboard side. Just off the mouth of the Fraser here in about 50 feet of water and... Uh, Roger that, I see it. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, there's some nice ones in there. Well, that's the great thing about this time of year, you know, the early Chinook season, you, the crabbing's still really good. The commercial fleet doesn't open up till June, so you can get some nice Chinook and yeah, some yeah. nice Dungeness crabs. See the points, point to point. It's gotta be six and a half, so this guy's legal. Yep. And we flip more, make sure it's a male. So that's a, a male with the, the point. So we got male, female. So no matter what size those are, those gotta go those back. Those gotta go back. Yeah. And then six and a half on the male Dungeness crab. Yeah. This one feels heavier, Jay. Does it? Yeah. Yeah, that last set was a little light. Oh, that's all right. Ah, look, there's some nice ones in there. Yeah, there's a good one right there. That's not a bad way to finish the day, eh? Yeah, you know, half a dozen Dungeness crab after a good morning of Chinook fishing. Yeah, seven, seven Chinook to the boat. Couple lost, couple hit and miss. Yeah, good fishing for, uh, you know, a quick morning fish, 25, 30 minutes from Vancouver. Yeah. So, can't beat that. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Thanks for having us, Jay. I really appreciate yeah, it. always a pleasure to fish yeah, with lots you, of Mike. Fun. Thanks for having me. And thank you, folks, for joining us on BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. We look forward to having you join us on a future episode. Your Toyota BC Dealers presents BC Outdoor Sport Fishing, made possible by Rapala, crafted from experience. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Freshwater Fisheries Society of BC, making fishing in BC even better. The Pacific Salmon Foundation, bringing them back stream by stream. Port Boat Hubs, our official servicing dealership, along with 